The story begins with a bustling city street filled with people going about their day. Suddenly, a critical disaster alert pings on everyone's phone, urging immediate evacuation for citizens near Inwang Mountain, where monsters have reportedly appeared. This alarming message isn't isolated to just one area. Similar notifications pop up for people in different parts of the city. Curiosity peaked, a streamer decides to investigate the situation firsthand, streaming live to his audience. Despite showing clear footage of the monsters, the viewers remain skeptical, dismissing it as a prank or a clever visual effect. However, the skepticism is shattered when one of the monsters suddenly reacts, startling both the streamer and his audience. Meanwhile, the scene shifts to our protagonist, Lee Hoyoung, who is also watching the stream. He is puzzled by how realistic the video appears and wonders why he keeps receiving these alert messages. Lee is skeptical about the monster sightings, attributing them to the recent surge in fake videos circulating online. Despite the mounting evidence, Lee finds it hard to believe that actual monsters have emerged on Earth. As Lee Hoyoung is going about his business, he suddenly comes face to face with a monstrous creature, sending a jolt of shock through him. The sight of the creature fills him with fear and his immediate instinct is to flee. However, to his surprise, the monster begins to act in a friendly and endearing manner, almost pleading for assistance. Despite the creature's attempts to appear harmless, Lee is still too frightened to stay. Just as he is about to make his escape, the monster does something unexpected. It shows Lee a picture, presumably of its family. This unexpected gesture touches something deep within Lee, sparking a sense of empathy and compassion. Moved by the creature's display of vulnerability, Lee decides to set aside his fear and help. Grateful for his assistance, the monster rewards Lee with a mysterious silver goblin's pill, promising that it will grant him a special ability once consumed. Perplexed by the gift, Lee is unsure of its true nature or purpose. As Lee contemplates the strange turn of events, he is interrupted by a news bulletin on TV. The report reveals that enormous, tower-like structures have begun appearing all over the world, with military personnel mysteriously vanishing upon entering them. This shocking development adds another layer of mystery and danger to an already perplexing situation, leaving Lee bewildered by the strange events unfolding around him. Suddenly, an explosion rocks the area outside Lee Hoyoung's house. People gather, shocked to find a towering structure blocking the road. Lee, too, witnesses the sudden appearance of a tower nearby. Intrigued and perhaps sensing a connection, Lee decides to consume the Silver Goblin's pill he had received earlier. As soon as Lee ingests the pill, his body is enveloped in a luminous blue aura. A window materializes before him, indicating that he has attained Sage status, which offers the optimal survival guide for his current circumstances. Additionally, a book materializes in front of Lee. Upon opening the book, another window appears, informing Lee that the door to the end of days is set to open in 15 days. He is given a quest to enhance his strength, cardio, and kendo skills. Determined to prepare for the impending challenge, Lee follows the guide's recommendations diligently. Each day, Lee embarks on a rigorous training regimen. Mornings consist of a 10-kilometer run, followed by kendo practice in the afternoon and weight training at night. After diligently adhering to his daily routine for 14 days, Lee Hoyoung made the decision to resign from his training regimen. His choice raised eyebrows, with someone even questioning his sanity. Despite the doubts of others, Lee remained steadfast, believing that people could think what they wanted about him. He was singularly focused on the looming end of days. As the countdown to the apocalyptic event reached its climax, Lee found himself abruptly transported to a dense forest. This unexpected turn of events left him bewildered, as it was not what he had anticipated. To his surprise, a sword materialized before him, and a mysterious window appeared, signaling the start of a new phase. The system launched into a tutorial, guiding Lee through the initial steps of this unknown game-like scenario. Following this, a notification indicated that an aptitude test had been conducted, and based on the results, Lee had been designated as a combat swordsman. This revelation opened up a detailed status window, presenting Lee with a wealth of information to digest and process. The sheer volume of data left him astonished, realizing that this new world held far more complexity than he had ever imagined. 
as Li Hoyang, at level 1, lifts the sword. A surge of excitement courses through him upon seeing his stats. He recognizes that this moment marks the true beginning of his journey. A window materializes, presenting him with two objectives. Survive in the forest for 60 minutes or locate the exit and escape. Viewing this as a tutorial period designed to help him acclimate to the game's mechanics, Lee contemplates his next move. Another window promptly appears, introducing the concept of the sage's status. This feature assures Lee that it will provide him with the best strategies for survival in his current circumstances. The guide accompanying this status advises Lee to utilize the entire 60-minute tutorial to dispatch as many monsters as possible. It warns against pursuing the second objective, suggesting that it may impede his progress. Lee ponders the potential utility of the sage's status window in this early stage of his journey. Lee Hoyoung ponders the sage's status window, considering its directive for him to exercise as a prescient move by the system. He internalizes the guide's counsel emphasizing the importance of hunting monsters and avoiding escape from the forest. As the tutorial commences, a level 1 raccoon monster emerges. Initially charmed by its appearance, Lee is caught off guard when the raccoon transforms into a fierce aggressor, lunging at him. Lee responds swiftly, dispatching the creature with a single, well-aimed strike of his blade. Victorious, Lee gains experience points from the battle. Reflecting on the encounter, Lee surmises that the ease of his victory likely stems from the raccoon being a tutorial creature. He calculates that each use of basic swordsmanship consumes 2 MP, and with only 10 MP at his disposal, he can employ this skill 5 more times. This realization underscores the importance of MP conservation as he continues his monster hunting endeavors. After dispatching the raccoon monsters one by one with his basic swordsmanship, Lee Hoyoung earns experience points gradually honing his skills. With each triumphant battle, he inches closer to his goal, until finally, he ascends to level 2. The victory not only boosts his morale, but also restores his health and mana points to full capacity. A notification pops up, informing Lee that he will receive points upon leveling up, which he can allocate to enhance his attributes. Currently, he has two points at his disposal. Excitement bubbles within him, as he contemplates the possibilities for improvement. The timing of his level up couldn't have been better, as his mana was nearly depleted. However, his elation is short-lived as the window displaying his progress begins to fade away. In its place, a new window materializes, announcing the adjustment of his player level back to one. As Lee grapples with this sudden setback, another window appears, introducing the concept of the weight of knowledge. This revelation explains that due to possessing the Sage's status window, Lee will progress through levels at a slower pace compared to other players. This unexpected twist leaves Lee reeling, realizing that there is a price to pay for the unique advantages granted by his status. Devastated by the loss of his hard-earned level, Lee Hoyoung is left bewildered, wondering when he will be able to level up again. However, his dismay turns to astonishment when he checks his stats and discovers that his stamina strength, and other abilities have increased. Not only that, but he also has two points to allocate from leveling up. This revelation surprises him, leading him to consider that instead of being a setback, this could be an overpowered ability. This realization fills Lee with happiness, knowing that despite the setback, he has gained something truly valuable. Lee Hoyoung continues his relentless pursuit of the raccoon monsters, determined to hone his skills and progress further. His efforts are rewarded as he levels up once again, only to have his level adjusted back to one shortly afterward. Despite this setback, Lee notices that his stats and remaining points are still increasing steadily, providing him with a glimmer of hope and motivation. As he reflects on his progress, Lee realizes that each level requires increasingly more experience to attain. However, he also acknowledges that with his current stats, it is more efficient for him to focus on improving his attributes than to solely pursue leveling up. With four choices available to enhance his stats, Lee deliberates on the most beneficial path to take. While strength and agility would bolster his combat prowess, he recognizes that sensitivity is crucial for his current situation. Therefore, he decides to allocate his points to increase his sensitivity level by four. Despite initially underestimating the raccoon monsters, Lee finds them to be surprisingly manageable. 
Their lack of strength compared to other tutorial monsters allows him to defeat them effortlessly, even with his default stats. This realization reinforces his belief in the effectiveness of his current strategy. The guide's directive for Lee Hoyoung is clear. Maximize the 60-minute tutorial by defeating as many monsters as possible. Lee's challenge lies in locating enough raccoon monsters within this time frame. However, his heightened sensitivity stat makes this task considerably easier. Notably, Lee begins to perceive a subtle energy, or chi, with his sensitivity stat now at 20. Unexpectedly, a notification declares that Lee has successfully vanquished all the monsters, triggering the activation of a hidden quest. A level 2 raccoon monster suddenly emerges behind Lee, launching a swift attack. Lee is momentarily surprised by the monster's speed, but he quickly regains his composure. Dodging the monster's next strike, Lee swiftly retaliates, defeating it with a single, decisive blow. Having emerged victorious against the boss and completed the hidden quest, Lee's efforts are rewarded with a sum of gold. Remarkably, upon completing the tutorial, Lee finds himself at level 7, a testament to his skill and determination in overcoming the challenges presented to him. Lee Hoyoung's senses are jolted as he realizes he's been transported to an unfamiliar location, surrounded by a group of other individuals. A sudden announcement echoes through the space, welcoming them as the successful participants of the tutorial. This place is revealed to be the lobby of the tower, specifically the C-2567 region. The revelation surprises Lee and the others, prompting a wave of confusion and astonishment. Surveying the group, Lee counts 14 men and 11 women, leading him to speculate whether everyone present had also completed the tutorial and been brought here. The atmosphere is charged with panic and uncertainty, understandable given the sudden and drastic changes that have unfolded in the world overnight. Lee reflects on how, had he not known about the impending end of the world beforehand, he might have been just as panicked as the rest. Despite the chaos, Lee manages to steady himself, resolving to navigate the challenges ahead and emerge from the tower alive. Amidst the murmurs of confusion, a girl speaks up, voicing the collective query, What is this place? In a surreal twist, a bunny materializes and introduces itself, explaining to the bewildered group that they are now in the Tower of the End. The sudden appearance of the bunny, Kum Kum, leaves everyone in a state of shock and disbelief. As Kum Kum introduces himself as a level 55 entity, the astonishment among the gathered individuals only deepens. Questions swirl in the minds of the group, with some speculating if Kum Kum is the one who brought them to this mysterious place. Observing the growing panic among the group, Kum Kum calmly assesses the situation, guessing that such a reaction is only natural given the circumstances. Amidst the uncertainty, Li Hoyoung steps forward, mustering the courage to voice the question on everyone's mind. What are they supposed to do now that they are here? In response, Kum Kum acknowledges the gravity of Lee's question. With a solemn expression, he reveals that all 22 players, including Lee, will be embarking on a perilous journey where their lives are at stake. This revelation sends shockwaves through the group, the weight of the situation sinking in. Kum Kum goes on to explain that the tower is not just a random structure. It currently houses all of humanity. The players must band together and tackle each floor's mission to ascend the tower. However, when Lee asks the crucial question of whether they can return to their normal lives after reaching the top, Kum Kum's response is dishearteningly uncertain. Even he does not know what lies beyond the tower's peak. Lee Hoyoung, seeking clarity, questions Kum Kum about the purpose behind scaling the tower's heights. Kum Kum responds with a philosophical query, questioning the need to seek meaning in every endeavor. He then delivers a sobering message, stating that those who fail to ascend will be eliminated. Adding to the gravity of the situation, Kum Kum reveals that a significant number of individuals were already eliminated during the tutorial phase. This revelation stuns Lee, prompting him to reflect on his previous oversight. While he understood the tutorial nature of their earlier experiences, he realizes that many may have struggled to even complete that initial stage. Kum Kum, sensing the tension in the air, poses a bold challenge to the group. He asks if anyone is brave enough to attempt to defeat him, stating that his defeat is necessary for them to return home. To sweeten the deal, 
He mentions a special reward for the one who manages to achieve this feat despite Kum Kum's seemingly unassuming appearance. Lee sees through the facade. He recognizes the danger in underestimating a level 55 opponent, acknowledging that he stands no chance in a direct confrontation. Lee Ho Young, faced with a perplexing dilemma, decides to adopt a cautious approach and observe the unfolding events. However, his contemplation is abruptly interrupted by the appearance of a window, bearing a directive from the guide to assist the lower floor manager, Kum Kum, in returning home. Puzzled by this unexpected instruction, Lee ponders its implications. Could it mean that he is supposed to attack the seemingly harmless rabbit? Despite his reservations, Lee considers that following the guide's instructions has always proven beneficial in the past. However, the current situation raises doubts in his mind. He wonders if obeying the guide's directive, which seems suspicious given the circumstances, is truly the right course of action. As Lee wrestles with these conflicting thoughts, another individual bravely steps forward, volunteering to confront Kum Kum. Determined to take matters into his own hands, the man launches an attack. However, his bravado quickly turns to shock as Kum Kum transforms into a ferocious beast and effortlessly incapacitates him with a single devastating blow. The sudden and brutal display of power sends shockwaves through the group, triggering a panicked scramble for safety. Amidst the chaos, Lee finds himself at a loss for what to do next. The guide's persistent instructions to assist Kum Kum now seem increasingly dubious, prompting Lee to question the guide's intentions for the first time. Suddenly, the sage's status window is triggered, revealing two abilities. The first is the sage's eye, which allows Lee Hoyoung to view the status windows of others. The second is the guide, which will be sent to Lee at a later time. Surprised by this new revelation, Lee wonders why these abilities are manifesting all of a sudden. As Lee examines Kum Kum through the sage's eye, he realizes the truth. With a smirk, he declares his intention to fight Kum Kum. Confident that the guide was not deceiving him, Lee prepares for the confrontation. However, his decision is met with concern from a woman who warns him of the danger. Other participants join her in trying to dissuade Lee from the duel. Despite the warnings, Lee reassures them that he has a plan. As the duel commences, Kum Kum wastes no time and strikes Lee with full force. Lee braces himself for the impact, determined to face the challenge head-on. Lee Ho Young is puzzled by Kum Kum's statement, as he is certain there are 25 people in the room, not 24 as Kum Kum claimed. Initially, Lee considers it a simple mistake, but he soon realizes the truth. The horror of facing a level 55 monster and the fear that it could eliminate a participant were intentional. Kum Kum intentionally stated the wrong number because there are only 24 actual people present. The 25th person was a hologram created by Kum Kum. Furthermore, Kum Kum himself is a hologram with no actual stats. With this revelation, Lee swiftly defeats Kum Kum, earning a stat point in the process. The revelation shocks everyone present, who had believed Kum Kum to be real. A man named Kim Siang steps forward, commenting that it was a waste for Lee to have received the stat point. He claims that Lee was merely lucky, implying that had he realized Kum Kum was a hologram, he would have taken action himself. Lee Hoyoung confronts Kim Siang, seeking clarification on his comment about it being a waste. Kim Siang explains that Lee is still at level 1 despite completing the tutorial, suggesting that Lee either avoided hunting monsters or was too weak to defeat any. This revelation surprises Lee, prompting him to question whether Kim Siang's words are born out of arrogance or genuine concern. As Lee absorbs the stat point, Kim Siang becomes visibly annoyed. Lee? reflecting on his past experiences, decides that it would be wise to steer clear of individuals like Kim Siang. However, he wonders how long he can maintain this strategy. Just then, an announcement is made regarding the distribution of starting gold to participants. The gold can be used in a shop, and additional gold will be awarded based on the number of monsters each participant hunted during the tutorial. The highest amount of shared gold in this area is 7,400. The group is taken aback by the announcement. Kim Junsong expresses admiration for whoever came first, acknowledging their impressive achievement. It is revealed that Kim Junsong has 1500 gold, while Kim Song has 1300 gold. However, the player with the most gold and who came first is Lee Hoyoung. Despite this, 
Li has no intention of revealing this information to the others, especially considering one person's jealousy over a mere stat point. The shop window opens, offering three main options for spending gold. Buying items, leveling up skills, or increasing stats. Li decides to increase his strength, stamina, and agility to 20, evening them out with sensitivity. He also purchases some clothes, feeling that his gym uniform is no longer suitable. Chai Yiziel approaches Li and asks for advice. Li is surprised, questioning why she would seek advice from a level 1 player. Chai Yiziel explains that she was impressed not only by Li's level, but also by his bravery. Li Hoyoung is able to see Chai Yiziel's stats, but he chooses not to reveal this to her. Instead, he asks Chai Yiziel how much gold she has. Chai Yiziel replies that she has 800 gold. Li Hoyoung thinks that Chai Yiziel is honest but he knows he needs to keep his use of a cheat code hidden. Li Hoyoung then asks Chai Yiziel if she likes exercising. Chai Yiziel responds that she doesn't mind walking. Li Hoyoung suggests that she should invest in increasing her stamina stat, as it is likely not very high. He explains that if she lacks stamina, she won't be able to use items for long, despite spending gold on them. Chai Yiziel decides to follow Li Hoyoung's advice and thanks him for it. The announcement then states that the first floor mission will commence soon, and participants are required to form parties of three. Players without a party would be assigned to a random one, and they were given 30 minutes. Hearing this, Lee Hoyoung anticipates a group mission, but it arrives sooner than he expected. Following Kim Junsong's suggestion, participants begin revealing their classes and forming teams with desired players. Chai Yiziel asks Lee Hoyoung to team up, and he agrees making her his first party member. Lee sees no reason to refuse a healer's request. Other participants also seek to join parties with members of their level. Lee ponders whether his level 1 status as a combat swordsman might be unattractive, considering the relaxed attitude of level 4 players. As everyone else finalizes their parties, only a few people remain ungrouped. Lee notices a couple of other unassigned participants and wonders if he should approach them to form a full party of three. However, he hesitates, unsure if they would want to team up with a low-level player like him. The tension mounts as the deadline for forming parties draws near. The announcement declares that the 30-minute window for forming parties has elapsed, and incomplete parties will now be filled randomly. With that settled, the first mission begins. The scene shifts to the forest, where Lee Hoyoung contemplates his luck with his party. Their third member is Kim Siao. Lee wonders if Kim will cooperate with the party, but he realizes that whether it's possible or not is beside the point. He needs to make it work in order to survive in this challenging environment. The second mission is to take down the Kobol tribe within a 12-hour time limit. Upon seeing the tribe, Kim Seong declares that he will handle the Kobolds and advises Lee Hoyoung not to interfere. Lee reminds Kim that this is a team mission, but Kim dismisses him, claiming Lee is riding on his coattails. Lee retorts that he will indeed do so, and observe Kim's skills. Deciding to follow Kim's lead for now, they proceed. Chai Yiziel worries if the team can complete the mission without any issues. As they advance, Kim becomes increasingly frustrated by the bugs in the area. Lee, noticing the abundance of bugs in the mountainous region, agrees. Chai Yiziel expresses concern about the strength of the cobalt monsters, wondering if their team is strong enough to handle them. Lee reassures her, saying they'll find a way to succeed. Lee Hoyoung tells Chai Yiziel that while there's a chance they are stronger than the raccoon monsters, they should still be cautious as the kobold monsters could be tougher. He reminds her that they are in the Tower of the End, so they need to be on guard. However, Lee is shocked to see that the kobolds are level 5 monsters, significantly stronger than the raccoon monsters. Chai Yiziel agrees, noting the obvious strength difference, and asks Lee what they should do next. Lee suggests they first scout the surroundings for more kobolds. But before they can act, Kim Seong unexpectedly jumps towards the kobold monsters and attacks. Chai Yiziel and Lee are surprised by his boldness. The kobold monster withstands Kim Seong's attack, leaving Lee astonished that Kim would engage the monster alone in such a reckless manner. As they watch, Lee realizes that Kim's attack was a diversion, allowing him to gauge the kobold's strength. Lee decides they should join the fight, but stay on the defensive until they understand the monster's abilities better. Chai Yiziel agrees, and they cautiously approach the kobolds, ready to engage in battle. 
Lee Hoyoung is surprised by Kim Seong's stubbornness, but is relieved to sense no other kobolds nearby. Chai Yiziel steps forward to assist Kim Sayoung, healing him from behind as he continues to attack the kobold monster. Lee Hoyoung observes that the kobold is definitely a challenge worthy of their levels, but with Chai Yiziel's help, Kim Seong might be able to defeat it alone. However, when Lee uses his Sage's Eye ability, he is shocked to see that their attacks are doing minimal damage compared to the monster's strength. He wonders if the monster has any weaknesses. Just then, the guide window appears, informing Lee that kobolds are passive monsters that do not attack unless provoked. Realizing that Kim Seong has needlessly provoked the creature, Lee checks another section of the guide and discovers something else. Then we witness Kim Seong triggering his special move, Stone Fist, but the kobold dodges his attack causing Kim Seong to hit a tree instead, which breaks off. Enraged, the kobold retaliates, and another kobold joins in the attack. Kim Seong realizes he's in trouble and wonders why Lee Hoyoung isn't helping him. He turns around to find Lee Hoyoung missing. As the second kobold prepares to attack Kim Seong, Chai Yiziel steps forward and tries to strike the kobold with her sword. However, the kobold remains unfazed, and Chai Yiziel trips and falls to the ground. The kobold then focuses on her, readying to strike. In that critical moment, Li Hoyoung throws a fruit at the kobold, slicing it with precision and taking it down instantly. Chai Yiziel is relieved and grateful that Li Hoyoung saved her just in time. On the other hand, Li Hoyoung notices that while the bugs ate the fruit, they avoided certain ones. Sensing something amiss, he consults the guide, which reveals that these apples are poisonous, and kobolds are vulnerable to poison. Realizing that the apples are the key to the level 1 mission, Li Hoyoung decides to use them strategically. He checks on Chai Yiziel, who thanks him for his help. Li Hoyoung remarks that he didn't anticipate another kobold being drawn by Kim Seong's actions, acknowledging that it could have been dangerous if he had been a bit late. Chai Yiziel reassures him, stating that he arrived in time to save them both. Meanwhile, a frustrated Kim Seong questions Li Hoyoung's whereabouts during the critical moment accusing him of hiding in a corner when the situation became dangerous. He mentions that after he had landed a few hits on the monster, then, Lee Hoyoung swoops in and lands the final blow. Confused by Kim Seong's accusations, Lee Hoyoung wonders why Kim Seong is speaking nonsense. Frustrated, Kim Seong storms off. Lee Hoyoung watches him leave, thinking that Kim Seong might be acting irrationally. The scene shifts to the Cobalt Village where Kim Sayong is once again facing the monsters alone. Meanwhile, Chai Yiziel and Li Hoyoung effortlessly take down the kobolds one by one. Despite being hit by the kobolds, Kim Sayong keeps fighting back, refusing to fall behind. He watches in shock as Chai Yiziel and Li Hoyoung handle the monsters with ease. Kim Sayong struggles against the kobolds and calls out for help. Seeing this, Li Hoyoung swiftly takes down the two monsters that were overwhelming Kim Seong. Then, Li Hoyoung tells Kim Seong that he took over the coattail ride in Kim Seong's place for a bit. Surprised by Li Hoyoung's actions, Kim Seong becomes happy and starts calling Li Hoyoung sir. Both Li Hoyoung and Chai Yiziel are shocked to hear this. A window then appears, stating that Li Hoyoung's team has cleared the mission. After clearing the mission, Li Hoyoung's party returns to the lobby. Kim Seong is frustrated that a level 1 player helped him and that he called Lee Hoyoung sir. On the other hand, Chai Yiziel congratulates Lee Hoyoung on raising his level. She notices that there is nobody else here yet, indicating that their team is the first one to clear the first mission. Lee Hoyoung tells Chai Yiziel that their team cleared the mission faster than others because they luckily managed to find the kobold's weakness. Chai Yiziel credits Lee Hoyoung's observational skills as she never could have thought of using the poison. Li Hoyoung tells Chai Yiziel that without the team's support, they wouldn't have cleared the mission. However, he feels like a fraud. Meanwhile, the other parties are also returning. It's Kim Junsong and Seo Juno's party. Li Hoyoung thinks that they must have found the poisonous apples too. He wonders if the other parties will make it back safely. Another party arrives, but only two members have returned. Worried, Chai Yiziel asks about the third person. The girl from the party explains that only two members were able to make it back. An announcement follows, stating that the first level mission has been completed by all parties. Shocked, 
Chai Yiziel shouts that one person still hasn't arrived back yet. Another announcement reveals that a total of six parties returned alive, but eight players have failed to return. Lee Hoyoung had expected that it would be hard for everyone to make it back. He wonders how many players will be eliminated before they reach the top of the tower.